Hi, I'm Rod from UnitedTaps.com, and today I want to talk about stomp, spank, step. You might call it a stomple step. Um, either way, I want to talk about some common problems that I see students have with this and how we can fix them. By continuing to watch this video, you are agreed to relieve United Taps and its staff of any liability for injuries or damages caused by watching or attempting any of the movements presented in this video. If you do not agree to this, please discontinue watching this video now. Thank you. Um, so first of all, there, there are a fair number of students who, who either haven't done these before or they do them very rarely. So when they give it a shot, when they first of all, it's awkward for them at first to do a flat foot, then the spank step, because step, because usually they're used to doing the dig, right? Everyone's used to doing the dig, the scuffle steps or paddles, whatever you want to call them. Um, that when we do a flat foot, that can be tricky. Um, some of the common problems that I see is when someone does try to do it flat foot, because they're so used to the dig, even though they're trying to do it flat foot, they'll still end up doing a dig. Right? Or, or kind of like a, it'll, sometimes they'll end up like more like a dig toe that's kind of mushed together like that. So how do we go from a, doing either a dig or kind of like a, a, a rushed dig toe, how do we get from there to doing an actual stomp? So there's a couple strategies that we can use. The first strategy is try to get the students to relax their ankle during the stomp as much as possible. So relax. If you relax it, it'll almost always go down completely flat. However, if all you do is say relax the stomp, what, what will often happen is the students will get that, but then, then they start sliding the spank sound after that. And so you have to, I found success in explicitly saying, hey, I want you to relax on the stomp, but then go ahead and tighten up a little bit on the spank. Now, it doesn't mean go crazy tight, but you need, if it's just totally relaxed there, it's just going to slide, and that's often what happens. So we're relaxed here, but we can tense up a little bit so that we can get that spank sound. So relax, tense, relax, tense. And again, when I say tense, it's a very, very mild tensing, just so there's some resistance versus just letting it slide back through. So relax, tense, relax, tense, relax, tense, relax, tense, okay? So that's your first strategy. Relax completely on the stomp, and then you can tense it very slightly for the spank. Uh, another approach to this is having the students literally think about when they do the stomp, is having the toe hit first. Now, we don't literally want this to happen. Right? That's not, we're after this. But right now, if their brain is saying, hey, I want you to do a stomp flat, and even though their brain is telling their foot to do that, their foot's still doing this. If we tell their, their, have their brain tell their foot, hey, do the toe first, very often what will happen is they'll hit it flat. Because what's happening is no matter what their brain says, it's generally trying to put the heel sooner, so let's lift the heel higher. So we do want it flat, but some for some students, I would try the other strategy first, obviously. But if that doesn't, even if after that strategy you're telling them to relax it and they're still, they're still doing the heel first, then try this strategy of saying basically try to make the toe hit first. And very often that will result in that flat stomp. So that's my other strategy. First strategy, relax on the stomp and then tense up very slightly for the spank. The second one is literally think about doing the, the toe sound first um, on the stomp so that you get it flat. That's obviously not the primary uh, strategy. That's like a secondary strategy if the first one doesn't work. But now you've got two strategies to help students actually get those stomps flat. And in addition to that, make sure they're really listening for that. Because uh, if they're not listening close for it, they might be doing digs and not know it. Or doing these and not know it. So if you can get them to pay close attention to what is your foot doing? Is it doing flat? Here's a, a nice, great little strategy I use in my class all the time that works well, and the students, they take to it well and they even kind of laugh, is I'll, have them, I'll say, okay, do some stomp spank steps, right? Do four. And they go, and I'll say, okay, raise your hand if you can 100% guarantee that every time you did a stomp, your foot was completely flat. And almost, whenever I ask that the first time, virtually no one raises their hand. Because the truth is, almost no one is paying that close attention to their feet to know the answer. They just don't know, so they're not going to say yes, because they don't know. Um, and a lot of times they'll kind of smile, or they'll do one of these like, I have no idea. <laughs> they won't say that, you can see on their face. They're like, I don't know, I don't know, I have no idea. All right, so I'm like, okay, no worries, do it again, and I'm going to ask you the same question. So I tell them what's coming, they know it's coming. 
And just having that knowing, they're going to be asked, are you 100% sure that every time you stomped, your foot was flat? Guess what? Guess what their mind is focused on really, really tightly. So they're really focused this next time, three, four, and a couple things happen. Number one, you'll see some of them just smile and laugh because they'll know, they'll know oh man, I totally, I'm totally not doing it flat. They didn't notice it before, but now they do. And there's like the, the laugh and the, the smile is kind of this recognition of, oh, I see what he's saying. I see, like, I, like they're discovering it for themselves, which is always a, a, a way better experience for them learning. When they experience it for themselves, they see the problem on their own. It's like, oh, okay, I got it. So some of them will laugh and smile and be like, okay, I totally didn't get it. Um, but some of them, some of them will be now. We'll, we'll be like, yeah, mine were flat, which is awesome. And then some of them will be kind of, uh, but I don't do the uhs. I'm like, no, no, no. I, I want a, either 100% guarantee that they were flat, or or nothing. I don't want like, well, it kind of was. I'm not after kind of was. I want to know that all four was flat. I said, okay, we're, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do another four, and I'm gonna ask the same question. So again, they're geared up, really listening in, and really concentrating on making it flat. And I'll do that for several runs. Usually by the third or fourth run, after they do it, I'll, almost everyone will be doing it the way that I want. And I won't, I'll, I'll even say, I'll usually on the last set, it's usually like, I don't even need to ask you if you, you know, if you're doing them flat. I can hear, I can hear the difference now. Hopefully you can too, and almost always they'll nod. Yeah, we can hear that we're doing it better now as well. Um, so that's kind of a fun strategy for getting the students to um, Focus in on what you're trying to make happen and for them to check for themselves and then to, and to have to basically report back in front of the class. Either yes, 100%, mine were flat, or no, they weren't. Uh, so that's a, fun, that's a fun way to um, implement, uh, implement technique and implement making sure that they're, they're making these strategies that you've given them happen for these stomp spank steps. All right, great. So hopefully you find that extremely helpful, whether you're a teacher or a student. But as a teacher, I can tell you that that strategy has been very helpful for me, and it's been fun for the students. They really enjoy that. Most of the time, I would say, anyway, most of the time they do. Um, hey, at unitedtaps.com, we have so much content. We have a huge taps tap dance video dictionary slash syllabus. We've got video breakdowns of 315 steps. Uh, we give you two sets of notes. One set of notes has all the steps in alphabetical order by root step. So, oh, I'm looking for a double Cincinnati. First, we go to C and find Cincinnati. And under Cincinnati are all the Cincinnati variations. Oh, there's double Cincinnati. Perfect. Easily done. So we have one set of notes in alphabetical order, so you can find any step easily. It's got the counts, and it's got all the parts written out. Plus, there's a video, of course, shot from behind, so it's from the back. Just like you learn in real class. It's like, okay, here's, you know, here's your double Cincinnati. Great. Awesome. We have a second set of notes that are in syllabus format. So it's basically here's level one, and then here is the order that I teach the steps. Here's level two, here is the order that I teach the steps. So if you're a teacher and you're just looking for an outline, I say syllabus, I mean it loosely. It's essentially an outline. Here's the stuff that I'm teaching, and here is the order that I'm teaching it. It's not like here's everything you're going to do on day one. Here's everything you're going to do on week two. It's, it's not like that. It's more of an outline. Um, that gives you flexibility and keep, you can keep track of, oh, we've covered that. Oh, we didn't cover that step. We should make sure we cover that um, for all the different levels. This is level one, or our beginner level, all the way up through level seven, which is some hard stuff. <laughs> um, so that is our tap dance a video dictionary syllabus, which you can get at unitedtaps.com. Um, after I created that, I said, hey, wouldn't it be awesome if there was a practice exercise combination for every single step in the dictionary? So if you're teaching that double Cincinnati, Shouldn't we have a double Cincinnati practice exercise combination? Yeah, yeah, we should. And shouldn't it be at the appropriate level? So if double Cincinnati, I'm not sure what level I teach that on. Let's say it's level five. Then that double Cincinnati practice exercise combination should be a level five combination. Or if we've got Cramperl, which is a level one step, our Cramperl combination should be a level one combination. It should be relatively on the easy side so we can use it for beginners. Because the whole point is, hey, I'm going to teach Cramperls in class today. I would like to have a practice combination. Oh, I do with this practice 315 practice set of 315 practice combinations, one for each of the steps in the dictionary and syllabus. So you, you can all buy those together. It's called our 315 deal at United Taps, and you save money, which is awesome. Uh, also, we have full lesson series. Now, if you're a student, a lesson series is awesome because I'm going to teach you all of those steps in detail, practice each of those steps in detail, and put those steps into various combinations. And we're gonna talk, we're gonna go more into detail about technique, and all that stuff. So the lesson series do everything go much, much deeper than just the dictionary. The dictionary is basically like, here's a cramp roll, step, step, heel, heel. Step, step, that's a you know, that's cramp roll, one and a two, that's it. 
All right, whereas the lessons that we're going to deep dive into and say, here's some common problems. That right heel's coming down too soon. You've got to really watch for that. This is what that sounds like. Here's how to fix it. You're going to lift the heel higher. You're going to add more pressure, and you're going to delay the heel. Those are three strategies. You can use any one of those or combine any of them, et cetera, et cetera. I'm talking a little bit fast. In the lesson, we definitely go slower. But that's the idea. You'll get, you'll get a, a lot deeper dive into those cramp rolls. And then in the lessons, in the full lessons, we actually practice them. This is, this is hugely important. Um, because it's, it's, it's fine for someone to show you what a cramp roll is, but you, don't, you aren't just magically good at it. You need to practice like slow, right? You need to do it over and over. They need to go a little faster. And you need to do it several, many, many repetitions and work your speed up on the right side. And then you also need to do that on the left side. In the lessons, we take time to do that. And then we'll take that cramp roll and we'll put it in a combination along with other steps you've learned in that lesson and steps that we've learned in previous lessons. So you're constantly getting to reinforce the steps you've already learned. And that's essential. It's, if you learn cramp roll in, let's say, lesson three, and you don't do cramp roll again until lesson 11, you're going to have forgotten it by lesson 11. It's just not going to happen. That, that cramp roll should be showing up, let's say maybe in lesson five, maybe lesson seven, maybe lesson nine, and then what, when you do it in lesson 11, you're like, I've already done that in many, many combinations, I'm comfortable with it, I know how to do it, and I feel confident, and therefore, I can actually have fun in the combination because I'm not freaking out because I don't remember what a cramp roll is. Um, so those are our lesson series. We have full lesson series. Our beginner lesson series is 12 lessons long. It's 12 hours. The reason it's so long is because we take time to go into detail in the steps. We take time to practice them, and then we put those in those combinations. I teach them slowly and clearly as well. So that's, we have our beginner lesson series, 12 hours, 12 lessons. Our advanced beginner lesson series, 12 hours, or sorry, 13 hours, 12 lessons. Intermediate. 12 lessons, that's like 13 hours. And then our intermediate advanced, there were so many steps, it ended up being 18 lessons, and it's like 28 hours. <laughs> um, here's what we did. In the intermediate and in the intermediate advanced, I made a slight change. And what I did for those is for every single step we do, we learn a combination. All right, so if we're learning a maxi forward pullback, right after we do learn how to do a maxi forward pullback, and we talk about the problems, and we practice it, then we actually put it in a combination so you can use it how you want to. I didn't do that on the beginner and advanced beginner levels, because at the beginner level, that's a bit much, I think, a combination after every single step. So at the beginner level, like we might teach cramp roll, and Irish, and maxi forward in a lesson, and then we'll put all three of those together in one combination. So there's basically one combination per lesson for our beginner lesson series and our advanced beginner lesson series. For the intermediate and intermediate advanced, I did combination for every step. Every, every single step gets its own combination. Plus, at the end of the lesson, we'll do a combination that puts all of those steps together. So those are our beginner, advanced beginner, intermediate, and intermediate advanced lesson series, which you can get at unitedtaps.com. I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for tapping with me. I, of course, am Rob Howe from unitedtaps.com, making you happier and healthier through tap dance.